Okay, let's try and get our heads around this. Three years. Um, that might be all we have before AI just completely changes the game. Yeah, three years sounds incredibly short when you frame it like that. We looked at this YouTube video of Julia McCoy's channel, and the title was pretty stark. The next three years of AI. Why even experts are terrified. That word terrified definitely jumps out. It's not uh, excited or intrigued. It's terrified. Exactly. Which is why we wanted to dive in. We're not talking vague, far off stuff here. This is about specific things predicted for 2025, then 26 and 27. Right. Concrete milestones almost. So think of this as um, the quick guide to understanding these big shifts without needing a PhD in computer science. And it's crucial because the source suggests these aren't just minor updates. The fact that the top AI folks are reportedly freaking out, well, that signals something significant is happening. Yeah, it really does. And the video kind of breaks down the progress into four things. AI is getting better, faster, safer, and cheaper all at once. That's the key part, isn't it? That all at once. Usually with tech, you get trade-offs. Totally. Like, remember early cars? Faster than horses, sure, but not exactly safe or affordable for everyone right away. Right. But here, the claim is simultaneous improvement across the board. Better, faster, safer, cheaper. That combination is, well, it's potentially explosive. And that feeds into this idea of an automation cliff. They're saying maybe by the end of 2025. Yeah, the end of 2025. Or a huge chunk of office work, admin tasks just gets automated. The video mentioned tech and finance leaders seeing something unprecedented, even bigger than, say, the shift to the cloud. Which was a huge statement. Cloud computing fundamentally changed business. So if this is bigger... It really puts it into perspective. It's like we've skipped ahead. Uh, the video suggested we might be 40 or 50 years ahead of where we thought we'd be. An incredible acceleration. And apparently there's a pattern driving it, a three-step thing. Yeah, exactly. First, there's been this breakthrough in understanding what they call scaling laws. Right. The scaling laws. Basically, it means we're getting much better at predicting how much computing power, data, and um, energy you need for the next jump in AI capability. So it's less guesswork, more of a science. Sort of. It gives a clearer path towards, well, towards even artificial superintelligence, or ASI. It provides a more predictable roadmap for development. Okay, so that's step one, the roadmap. Yeah. Step two is about inference time. Just letting the AI think longer. Essentially, yes. Increased inference time compute scaling, just giving the existing models more processing time allows them to unlock uh, deeper capabilities. It's like they can explore possibilities more thoroughly. Like letting a chess master have more time per move. That's a good way to put it. They can go deeper, find more sophisticated solutions just with more time and compute power. Okay, but the third step, the video called this the real game changer. AI distillation. Ah, yes. Distillation. This is where it gets really interesting, potentially exponential. It's the idea that AI models can teach other AI models, and the new ones become even smarter. Exactly. One generation of AI creating the next, smarter generation. It sets up this recursive improvement loop, a self-accelerating cycle. Wow. And they mentioned Ilya Sutskever leaving OpenAI to focus specifically on superintelligence. That move kind of highlights how seriously they're taking this distillation idea, right? It certainly seems to underscore the significance. When key figures shift their entire focus like that, it suggests they believe we're on the cusp of something profound. Okay, so that sets the stage. Let's look at the timeline. 2025, year of the autonomous agent. That automation cliff hits. And these agents, they're stressed, are way beyond current chatbots. Right. Not just answering questions, but actually doing things. Precisely performing complex workflows, handling entire projects. Think of them as digital workers, really. With different levels of independence, like self-driving cars have levels. Exactly the analogy used. Some agents might need constant human checks. Others could operate almost completely autonomously on specific tasks. And they mentioned swarms of these agents working together. Yeah, AI agent swarms. Specialized agents collaborating, maybe even competing, to solve really complex problems. It's a fascinating concept, distributed digital intelligence tackling tasks. The video had a concrete example, like um, an agent creating content on AI's impact. Right. It could generate ideas, scrape Google for research. Write an article, find relevant YouTube clips, embed them. And then draft an email to share the whole package. Yeah, although they did mention a funny little snag, getting the email subject line to be dynamic was still tricky. Ah, yeah. It's a good reminder that even with these huge loops, there are still practical implementation details to iron out. The plumbing still matters. True. And it's not just content creation. 
automated customer greetings, sales intake. It's happening now. And the prediction is by the end of 2025, Fortune 500s having hybrid workforces, humans managing teams of both people and AI agents. That's a fundamental shift in management and what work looks like. Absolutely. It raises questions about skills, collaboration, team dynamics, everything changes. So the bottom line for 2025, according to the video, if you do it on a computer, it can be automated. The only question is how much human oversight is needed. A stark summary, but that seems to be the message. Okay. Shifting gears to 2026. This is the year of the robot. This is where the digital intelligence starts moving into the physical world. True embodied autonomy. So AI controlling actual physical robots that can interact with the world. Yes. First generation humanoid robots making their debut. They mention figure robots shipping. And progress from Boston Dynamics, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is apparently trying to solve the robot world model by mid-2026. What is that exactly? Solving the robot world model is crucial. It means getting robots to perceive, understand, and interact with the physical environment, um, almost like humans do. Spatial awareness, object recognition, predicting consequences, that sort of thing. So they can actually navigate and manipulate things in our messy, unpredictable world. That's the goal. Without that, robots are limited to very controlled environments. This unlocks broader applications. And the price. They mentioned around $80,000 for the advanced humanoid ones. Yeah, initially, but also potentially basic utility robots in the uh, $2,000 to $10,000 range. Two to 10000 that's <laughs> like a used car. That makes it feel very close. It really does. It brings it out of the realm of just massive corporations or research labs and into something potentially accessible for smaller businesses, maybe even individuals eventually. The video compared it to the first iPhone moment. Expensive, maybe limited at first, but you knew it was the start of something huge. A good comparison. Not the finished product, but the beginning of a revolution. Okay, now brace yourself. 2027, the year of full artificial super intelligence, ASI. This is the threshold year in their prediction. The point where AI systems might start improving themselves without human intervention. That recursive loop scaling laws, inference time, distillation, just takes off. It accelerates beyond our ability to directly guide it or maybe even fully comprehend it. That's the implication. So not just smarter AI, but AI capable of genuinely independent innovation. Yeah. Evolution. That seems to be the definition they're working with. Systems that can set their own goals, learn, and evolve capabilities autonomously. And apparently, multiple major AI labs are reaching this conclusion about the timeline simultaneously. That's a key point from the video. It suggests this isn't just one company's secret project. It implies a broader technological convergence is happening. Which also means maybe no single company gets to control ASI if it emerges. That could be one interpretation, yes. Yeah. A more distributed arrival, perhaps. And here's that quote again. The AI we use today is the worst it will ever be. It's a powerful line, isn't it? Every single model from here on out is expected to be significantly, perhaps drastically, more capable. The pace is just so fast, the video says even the experts are scrambling to keep up. Which is understandable if the rate of change is truly exponential. They threw out some names too. Elon Musk talking about seeing the start of superintelligence, maybe early 2025. April 2025 was the mention, I think. And Google's AI lead talking about a straight shot to ASI. Plus Sam Altman acknowledging we're on the verge of transformative change. These are major figures. While exact dates are always speculative, the convergence of opinion towards imminent, profound change is notable. And the absolute key thing is, this isn't sci-fi anymore. It's potentially months away, not decades, poised to reshape everything faster than the Industrial Revolution. A societal shift on an unprecedented timescale. The video's final advice was basically, be a first mover. Adapt, build, engage with this now. Don't wait. Because the landscape is changing under our feet, adaptability seems crucial. So let's quickly recap. 2025, the automation cliff hits, autonomous agents arrive, hybrid workforces start forming. 2026, embodied AI, robots start entering the physical world in a meaningful way. First-gen humanoids and more accessible utility bots. And 2027, the potential threshold for artificial superintelligence. AI begins self-improvement. It's quite a three-year forecast. The scale and speed are just staggering to think about. Definitely. The video frames it as the biggest shift since the Industrial Revolution. Maybe bigger and happening right now to us. Something we'll all witness and experience directly. Which leads us to that final thought. Something for you, our listeners, to really chew on. If AI reaches this point of independent innovation, this ASI, what does that actually mean for us? 
for human roles, for society. Yeah. How do we prepare individually and collectively for a world where the AI we have today, the supposed worst it will ever be, is already so powerful and it's only going to accelerate from here? What's our place in a world with intelligence that might soon vastly outpace our own? Profound questions. And according to these predictions, we might need to find some answers sooner rather than later.